couple things I felt like I wanted to, to to get out there, just based on recent interactions with with some people that are a little newer to trading. I would recommend you seek simplicity over complexity. And if you can't put it on a cocktail napkin, toss it out, okay? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I could probably draw you that TFM 10% system on a cocktail napkin. I could probably draw a TKO on a cocktail, cocktail napkin or anything else. And this is pretty much my entire methodology in a nutshell. <laughs> Sometimes, especially like if I'm speaking overseas, which I haven't done in a while, COVID kind of mucked everything up. It was kind of funny coming out of COVID. I was my phone was ringing again. Like uh, everybody was so gung ho, like we're gonna we're gonna get you in, we're gonna do all this stuff. And I don't know, I did a lot of that too. It's like I look back at some of the things I said I was gonna do, and I did some of them, but not a lot. Life gets in the way, I guess. But uh, usually, for some reason, I don't know why it has to do with overseas, but. Uh, I'll put up a chart with like a thousand indicators on and I'll say, well, if you understand this, you understand my methodology and people will get their cameras out and take pictures of it. And, and I'm like, this is a joke. Okay. It's then I'll show them persistent pullbacks, TKOs, all things of that nature. But this is the entire methodology in a nutshell. I, for the most part, except for a few little patterns here and there, I trade pullbacks and you want to make sure you get an entry, you put a stop in, your IPT gets hit, initial profit target that is, and then you trail that stop higher on the remainder of the shares. That's pretty much it. Now, keep it simple. Again, this is just a, this was a hot IPO, and it it just kind of came public, died out, and then it took off and pulled back, and that's it. Okay, and then the entry was here, stop was here, initial profit target was there. So it's a hot IPO, first deep retracement. And that one took off nicely. Unfortunately, it went up two or three hundred percent or whatever. That's fortunately, but then it 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 imploded, which is fine. And it stopped. It turned out to be a decent trade. We talked about it last week. You can check that out. But the drawdown was abysmal on this one, even after taking partial profits. But the point I'm trying to make is keep it super simple when it comes to your methodology and. As Linda Rass, Linda's going to be at this um, at this seminar. That's going to be cool to see her again. But as Linda Rasky says, all you need is one pattern to be successful. And, and I agree. You just need one setup, and that's all you need. And uh, John's here tonight. Uh, John does my stuff too, but he does the the IPO version of my stuff, and he's done really well with that. And that's why he and I are talking a lot about IPOs lately. But anyway, what's even cooler was... This was a buy at D, and not that I won't ever show you something if it's a good example, but for the most part, I'd say 95.8% of everything I show you, or maybe 99%, I publicly talked about before I took the trade. Now, if it's something like the, I almost said the symbol. <laughs> the aforementioned mystery chart going into tomorrow that's on the trading service and i know i'm teasing a little bit here but, I, but that's out of respect to my my clients who are paying for that and the facebook group is is the the gold members and i'll put out things like buy a d patterns there on occasion and some other uh, setups here and there but in any was a buy a d and Here's the trades that I took on that one. Just a representative sample, 1,000 shares in this one particular account. Now, this wasn't the perfect example I wanted to show you for keep it simple, but I think it'll do. And the buy it be you buying on a new closing high with IPOs with a few caveats. You've got to have, you have to have adequate volume, adequate range, and then there's a day one rule. Day one sets a high for the week. You have to that's also close above that high. So if you were just trading, a, if this high was lower than this high, if day one was not the high for the week, the first opening week, then the buy a B would be right here, okay? So that's how simple this little pattern is. You're just buying a new closing high. That's it. It's kind of like the Landry 100, but with IPOs. And then you are taking, you are buying that new closing high. And that's because, Lots and lots of reasons, which I went into in the IPO course. 
But the main reason is everybody is happy at a new closing high. They're also hard to short, so there's no shorts in there uh, trying to short it and muck things up. Man, eh, technically the the underwriter, I guess, could short it, or there's some complex rules which don't really mean a whole lot when it comes to trading, other than for the most part it can't be shorted. And there's a lot of excitement with IPOs as they make in these new highs. New highs elsewhere tend to kind of go unnoticed, although the closing high is a bit of a, a stealthy type of thing. A trader many, many years ago told me that, where like you have a like market will make a high, like a brand new high here, and then later on it'll make that new closing high. Well, that new closing high is kind of a stealthy thing because not everybody's screens light up or everybody notices it's made a new high. And that's kind of the thinking that I was thinking with the buy at B also, and you know, ABC as we talked about earlier. But the other thinking is if this IP is gonna take off, it's gonna make a new closing high first. By the way, and this is something I was putting out in the, in the Facebook group, I think earlier this week, I was doing my IPO analysis and I was shocked at how many IPOs came public on day one and just died out and never took out, never took out that day one high. That simple little rule in and of itself will save you a lot of money when trading IPOs. But anyway, the new buy was uh, on this day here. And the next day I took a two point profit on that, which percentage wise, that's huge. So I was a thousand bucks. Now you'll notice that I did let this come back in on me a little bit. And what I was trying to do is I was trying to survive to see if this thing just, just kind of whips on right back in. Uh, I would almost prefer, I mean, it's a lot of fun when you get an IPO and the next day, you know, next morning you're taking profits. That's that's a lot of fun. And I love doing that, don't get me wrong, but I'd much prefer that if they would take their time and then hit that IPT, initial profit target, and then consolidate or whatever, and then slowly take off, and then I'm in it for a long, long time. It's fun when you get in these bottle rocket sort of moves, so to speak, as I've discussed before. But a lot of times they're hard to for the market to sustain them. But anyway, the buy was there, and I flipped out half my shares. Now technically, I, again, I should have been at break even, so shame on me. And I guess I wasn't watching the percentage loss or, or the the money loss, so I did give up 345 on the second loaf. But net net over two days, that's 655 dollars. Do the math on that. That's Eighty-two thousand two fifty-five thereabouts. If you could do that every two days, <laughs> which I know you can't, but it's fun to do. You know, my wife's like, "What's that thing you do?" It's like annualizing. Yeah, yeah. So if you could make a hundred bucks a day, that's twenty-five grand a year. If you could make four hundred dollars a day, that's a hundred grand a year in the markets. Now, easier said than done, but it's something to to respect for sure. Like that's nothing to sneeze at make it 650 bucks over a couple of days. It, and, you know, it didn't turn into mud ball trends, but hey, next, got a little, um, got a little walking around money, ready for another trade. Anyway, so keep it su simple, a uh, little bit slightly more complex pattern, but certainly easy, super easy to recognize, super easy to trade. The, the caveats would be that you wanna make sure the stock is, persistent and accelerating and all the other things I've talked about recently. And this stock fits the bill. Go in and watch the last two or three weeks of the week of charts. But you can see we had lots and lots and lots of Landry light, like 60 bars or so. So for 60 days, the load never touched the 30 EMA. That's a very, 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 very impressive trend. It was also accelerating as I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. It looks like it had the, the three gear thing we talk about, first gear, second gear, third gear. So first gear back here, draw a turn line, worked away way higher, then it accelerated higher, and then it had that third gear just kind of like taken off. Anyway, so the, the whole pattern for the, what do I call it now? Landry light pullbacks, she used to call it kiss ma, M-A, ma. Goodbye. Now I'll call it Landry Light Pullback. So if you are reading the Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks, by the way, if you want a free copy of that, DaveLayer.com slash free dash book. Check the comments below. I think I have it in the link. And I'll give you a free copy if you want. Anyway, you can see lots and lots of Landry Light. And then Landry Light goes to zero because once you intersect the moving average, the count resets. 
So again, keep it, keep it super, super, super simple. As I said a thousand times before, and I'll probably see it <laughs> in San Francisco again, although I'm not going to call anybody out, but usually people will get up and they'll talk about all their complex things or whatever and all their ways they do things and the counting of the waves and all this other crazy stuff. And then usually they'll have a moving average, just a random moving average on the chart. And I always am shocked how just something as simple as, uh, not an event, Landry, I just put my name on it, kind of like, <laughs> kind of like Bollinger, put his name on the Bollinger bands, you know, or the uh, standard deviation bands, which is brilliant, though. I Absolutely brilliant. Not to take anything away from him. Speaking of Illy, I like, I was talking about Illy earlier. Uh, <laughs> my wife's like, who's this guy? I'm like, John Bollinger. He's like, what's his deal? I was like, he put his name on an indicator and uh, became famous. He's like, why don't you do that? It's like, all right, so I'll do it. Landry light, there you go, you got it. Because <laughs> before that, it was like everything was like a bow tie or whatever. But I digress. Uh, just something is, and it doesn't have to be my simple stuff. There's other simple stuff out there, but really simple, simple, simple pattern. This thing turned into mother all winners. I think it was just like a, it, it took off. It's another one of those bottle rocket things. Took off and then came back in, unfortunately. But again, not to beat the dead horse, keep it simple. So there's your Landry Light pullback. Your, and this is something I don't recommend programming screens to, to spit out things mechanically. My screens are very loosely oriented. In fact, I'm just looking for a pullback from recent highs, okay? And I'll give you those scans if you want. But if you were to mechanize something like this or something like this could be mechanized in your scans but still you want to make sure you're still picking the best of the best stocks all right so just this last one i kind of added in right before i went live and i just was thinking about it it's like trading really is a million little things about a million little things and this was based on what i'd recently reread from livermore speculation is a hard and trying business and the speculator must be on the job all the time, or he'll soon have no job to be on. One of the stories here that just quickly comes to mind randomly is uh, we had a stock, I think it was KNF, I want to say, I'm pretty sure it was. And it looked great. And I kept it on a little longer than I normally would. It was an IPO. But I kept it on a little bit longer than I normally would in the pullback just because it, I thought it looked great. But it was like day after day after day after day. I, I come in every day and I put on my order. Every day, every day, every day, every day, put on the order. And then I was like, this thing was down. I'm like, eh, this thing's not going to trigger. So I went into the house and had lunch and probably got my ADD probably kicked in. God knows, I probably ended up in the garage, saw a piece of wood or something. <laughs> and I came back in and I checked the Facebook group. And somebody said, uh, hey, we had a trigger in the, in the Landry stock for the night or the setup for today or whatever. And I'm like, oh, crap. And luckily, I was able to get in. But I want to thank you guys for that again. And I could have easily missed a big winner. And if I'd have missed that big winner, I'd have been pissed off. So it's a lot of details. And I'm the antithesis, if I easy for me to say, of a lot of the crap out there, a lot of the guys out there making it look easy. Because if I, if I ever make it look easy, please call me on it. I mean, at times it can be, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of details and you really, really, really have to be on your game. Now, not to talk out of both sides of my mouth, but I do find that busy traders make good traders because they only trade when conditions are conducive. Now, if you are busy, which is great for my core methodology, just make sure you take a few minutes out of every day to make sure your orders are set up. So I mentioned earlier, I went into the kitchen, had lunch, watched a little TV or whatever, or like I said, found myself in the garage, saw on a piece of wood. Had I put in an entry order, a stop entry order, that's all I would have had to do, right? Then I could have done all those things and I would have, got a, I would have gotten an alert when I got hit and okay, maybe I need to see if there's any action needs to be taken. But for the most part, there's nothing to do. Trading is a lot of waiting, but it's those key little moments where you have to do something and that's what makes it so damn hard. But it's not impossible, it can be done. All right, 